So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to revolutionizing your transportation at the speed of sound. And what a great honor for me to be here presenting on the digital innovation stage. And to stay a bit in team of this digital innovation, we try to make an app that's showing what we are doing. But actually, we're not in the business of making apps. We're in the business of high-speed transportation. Transportation that can take you, from example, from your home in Amsterdam to your work in Paris, door-to-door -door connection within just 45 minutes. Let me ask all of you a question. Who is traveling to their work almost every day? I see a lot of hands. And who would love it if this trip would be less time consuming? Nice. Well, then we might have a solution for all of you. Because commuting has always been a great part throughout human history. Let me take you back to the 15th century, where you see a world map of Amsterdam. And if you were working here, in this nice castle, you would probably live somewhere here, or somewhere here, and not that much further away, because the only transportation system that you had were your legs and your feet. Or maybe you could live here, if you were a rich guy, you could buy a horse and a carriage, but not that much further away. And actually, your whole world consists out of the, the city or the village that you were living in. And when the cars and trains got invented, you could live a bit more further away from your, uh, yeah, from your work. And as we look to the world nowadays, when you want to work in Amsterdam, but you don't want to buy or rent a house, which is rooftop priced, then you're, you can work in Harlem, you can work or you can live in Almere, you can even live in a city called Wormerveer. But actually, not that much further away if you want to have a decent time to your work in Amsterdam. And a lot of people, they commute to and from the work. So what we see is that the roads get clogged, which means a lot of pollution in the air. The trains, they are full, expensive and slow, so not really that convenient. But to stay attractive as a big city for, for people to live in and for businesses to settle, top-notch infrastructure is really key. And maybe you even had this situation in your life, where you had a job offered multiple hundreds of kilometers away, and you were in a dilemma. Do I take the job and take the travel time for granted or move my house? Or do I reject the job? Well, isn't it crazy that we base the fact on where we live, where we settle ourselves, on the fact where we are working? Or the other way around? Well, imagine when almost all cities in the Netherlands would be connected within just 30 minutes. Imagine that you have the freedom to live and work wherever you want. Imagine that distances just don't matter. And then to imagine that this can be done with a system that is faster than airplanes, capable of reaching speeds up to 1,200 kilometers an hour that it is cheaper than trains, so it's possible for the daily commute, and that it has zero emissions. Exactly that is what we are doing with the Hyperloop, consisting of small, flexible, lightweight capsules traveling through a tube where there is almost no air resistance. And this makes it possible to travel a lot faster, way more efficient, and way more cost-effective than the current transportation systems. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tim, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hard Global Mobility. In the coming couple of minutes, I will tell you about how we envision this new mode of transportation, how it will affect your life of your trips in the future, and what are our further plans into realizing this new mode of transportation. But when most people think about Hyperloop, they know it as an idea proposed by Elon Musk for the route between Los Angeles and San Francisco, which was around 500 kilometers away. And it was possible to do this trip in around you know, 30 minutes with a Hyperloop. But to stay a bit more in the region where we are now, we're going to look to Amsterdam and Paris. And if you take a look to the travel times, it would be possible to have this trip with a Hyperloop done in just 33 minutes. And compared to all the other transportation systems, 
you're getting there a lot faster. But actually, we're taking it way further than just a real fast connection. We're taking it way further than just a fast train. Let's look a bit more into detail. If you have Amsterdam and Paris, a direct connection would be very nice. But along the route, there is Rotterdam, Antwerp, Brussels, even Lille. So what is high-speed rail doing? High-speed rail is going through all those cities, taking a huge D route, causing your trip to take a lot longer than it should do. We can do a lot better than that, right? So how would this look with the Hyperloop? Well, the Hyperloop will have a direct connection between Amsterdam and Paris. And you could think of it like, like a highway, an extremely fast highway, but then without traffic jams. If you want, for example, to travel from Amsterdam to Brussels, and the vehicle you're in is entering Brussels, it will take an off-ramp to Brussels, stop there, you can get out, get in your, your self-driving car, who's taking you there to your final destination, and you're happily in Brussels. And when you travel, for, for example, from Brussels to Paris, it's the other way around. You get picked up by a self-driving car in front of your house, which brings you to the Hyperloop station, where you will enter this main route for between Amsterdam and Paris, which will get you to Paris. And this is all done without interrupting the vehicles going from Amsterdam to Paris. The vehicles, they merge flawlessly into the main flow of vehicles inside the main tube again, without obstructing or slowing down the other vehicles. And this is not just limited to Brussels. Also, the other cities in between, but also the, even the smaller cities in between can be used as a connection to this network because it's very easy and convenient to connect, uh, to have such on and off ramps. So you will create a lot of cities along this route which are highly attractive to live and work in and are extremely good connected. But when you are implementing a Hyperloop system, it will go a lot further than just transporting passengers. You're not getting just a fast people mover. Besides fitting passengers, you can move pallets, air freight containers, even two full-scale containers will fit inside this Hyperloop tube. So you're getting one system that can almost move everything you can dream of. But there's one challenge in realizing the Hyperloop, and that is like the implementation in the real world. So let's look to that. And the nice thing about implementing a Hyperloop in the real world is that it's actually already its own tunnel and its own viaduct. So it can be built, it can be built above the ground, placed on pillars, so therefore you need less ground to build your infrastructure, and that makes it more cost effective. It will not affect the infrastructure that is already there, so it's more easily to be implemented. And when you are yeah, near to crowded cities or crowded places, you just go underground. And actually, this is a bit more expensive because you need to dig a tunnel. But luckily, uh, Elon just confirmed that he is working on this. So uh, I see a bright future in that. So now we know how these routes were going, how it will be implemented. But how do these capsules work? Well, these capsules, they are traveling through this vacuum tube. Well, they will be levitating magnetically, and therefore, there is no mechanical friction, no wear, keeping the maintenance costs as low as possible. Well, they will be propelled by linear electrical motors, extremely efficient linear motors, and they're not only propelled by those, but also decelerated, making it able to regenerate the energy that's been used during acceleration again, making the system even more efficient. And because there is almost no power required to, to transport those vehicles, you just need solar panels on top of your tube to generate enough energy to power your whole system. And this makes it possible to travel completely CO2 neutral. And to realize this, uh, this nice future, the first steps, they've already been made. You've maybe heard about the SpaceX Hyperloop Path competition, where Elon Musk challenged students to build a physical Hyperloop prototype, where SpaceX was building a Hyperloop test tube, where the student teams can test their vehicle in and compete against each other to see which Hyperloop is the best. 
And it started with, with more than 2,000 applicants, where I was also one of. And in the finals, there were just 27 teams left. And one and a half year ago, the founders of Hard Global Mobility have founded the Delft Hyperloop team, where we started completely from scratch. We thought about the concept, we've gathered a new team. This prototype has been designed and built in just one year with, yeah, more than, with around 30 students selected out of 200 applicants, where we've chosen the most motivated and dedicated students who could help us in pursuing this dream. And along the route, we've gathered more than 75 partners from the industry who could help us as well in realizing what we were working for this year, which was winning the competition. And that's what we've done. And that was really, really great. But this competition, that was half scale. And now we're going full scale. And for realizing that, a few things still have to be addressed. To realize this full scale system, we're going to a rigorous testing plan to make sure that everything works exactly the way we are designing it. Our team will prove that the system is safe and robust and operation and fulfills all of the performance requirements. Every year from now on, we are constructing progressively larger testing facilities, testing more and more systems at increasingly higher speeds. And here comes the nicest thing. We're aiming for a city-to-city -city Hyperloop system, not within 20 years, not within 10 years, but just within four years. We're planning on building a Hyperloop track of tens of kilometers between two cities, which we can prove operation in the year 2021. With every dream, it starts with a small step. And this is our small step. To test all of the most fundamental systems, we are already building Europe's first full-scale Hyperloop test facility, where we can prove all systems that do not require high speed. And actually, you can see this as a very long vacuum chamber. It's actually longer than the biggest vacuum chamber in, uh, in Europe. And the amount of tests that can be done inside this 30-meter test tube are actually quite broad. Think of the levitation system, stabilization system, acceleration system, also the safety systems, which is very important. And as you can see, not only our logo is on the tube. Well, the biggest construction company of the Netherlands, called BAM, they are supporting this project by building this full-scale Hyperloop test facility together with us. And it's really amazing to see how quickly this is picked up in the industry and people are uh, willing to help us in realizing this dream extremely, extremely fast. And it goes really fast because we're already, we're already constructing it. The tube sections, they already are welded together. The foundations are placed. And as we speak, the finishing touches are being made on this test tube. And we want to have this tube up and running by the end of this month. And we're going to unveil it on the 1st of June. So keep an eye on that date. And this test setup will generate a lot of, uh, a lot of knowledge and a lot of test results for our further plans. So what are our further plans? Well, our further plan will consist of a three kilometer full-scale Hyperloop test facility, which we can use to prove top speed, making corners, and implementing those very, very important switches. And we want to have this up and running in 2019. And firstly, we will start with constructing one kilometer track where we can test at higher speeds, where eventually two additional kilometers will be built, which has the corner and the switch proving those systems. And because of the incredible usefulness of this facility, there's already a tremendous amount of traction of uh, interested governments who would like to have this test facility. So currently, we are uh, thinking about what's the best place to place this test facility and gather the right partners and investors for realizing that. And after all those critical systems are tested, then it's time for the bigger work. The connection between two cities, where will we firstly start with constructing a route of uh, multiple tens of kilometers between two cities. And after those systems, they are uh, completely successful. We can start expanding the route through the cities and have the first track 
which can transport people and cargo up and running, where we aim to have this system fully tested in 2021. And then the real fun begins. It's time to start expanding the network. Do you guys remember this image where you yeah, could live when you were working in Amsterdam and still have a decent time to go to your work? Well, in the bigger picture, it looks a bit more like this. You could live somewhere in the, in the green area. Now, what will this look like when there will be a Hyperloop network in the Netherlands? Well, this Hyperloop network might look something like this. And it will expand the place of where you can live and still be able to go to your work in Amsterdam through this huge amount of green area where you will still be able to go to your work in Amsterdam in just 30 minutes. And those green dots you see, that are places where Hyperloop stations are placed. You will still be able to get with your self-driving car to the Hyperloop station, which brings you to the Hyperloop station in Amsterdam within those 30 minutes. And when those first operational networks start to arise, it can go really, really fast. Let me show you this. Oh, you could, you could live in uh, Belgium. You could live in Germany. Maybe you could even live in, uh, in Groningen. But what I said, it can go really fast when those first networks start to arise. This shows the railways in America in 1870. And as you can see, they already had a route going from east to west coast, which was quite enough at the, for the time. But what happened in the 20 years afterwards was way more amazing. Because in just 20 years, they've expanded this whole network of railways with more than 300%. More than 150,000 kilometers of railway was built in that time. And it was one century ago. Can you believe that? The time when they could just communicate via talking and notes and sending homing pigeons, they could already expand their network so incredibly fast. So just think about how fast this can go when a Hyperloop network uh, starts to be deployed. And then the continent might look a bit like this. You would have the big cities, but also the smaller cities in between connected to this network, it will make you able to yeah, travel over this whole continent as you can now travel with a metro in a city. And imagine what this will do with the world and with your life. There will be a world where distances just don't matter. You could have the freedom to live and work wherever you want. You can just go anywhere, anytime. You can just go on your tablet, think about a nice route, maybe from Amsterdam to Paris, request a pickup, and do this trip in just 45 minutes. And that's what I call revolutionizing your transportation at the speed of sound. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim.